When I was 20 years old, I was home from college, and my mother decided then to announce to me that the man who I thought was my father for my entire life was not. Um, my mother was a German lady, and uh, she met Earl, an American army officer, in uh, Berlin, Germany in the 50s, after, after the war, um, while she was looking for my real father. Uh, she didn't have any luck, she didn't find him, and eventually she married Earl, and he adopted me when I was five years old. I was with my grandparents during that time. And um, we then got stationed at an army base in the U.S. The marriage lasted for seven years, and uh, I saw my adopted father one time after the divorce uh, before he died. The evening my mother decided to tell me about my birth father, she said his name was Yurik Pazanowski. They met after the war when they were trading on the black market, which is something that was dangerous to do in Germany after World War II, but it was a way to survive. Uh, they fell in love, uh, she got pregnant, they moved into a relative's apartment. One night, two business associates of Yurik's showed up, called up to the window, he went down to talk to them, that was the last time my mother ever saw him. Um, when she told me this, I was kind of elated uh, that I had this father that I didn't know about, that my adopted father, who I didn't have a great relationship with, a short one, uh, was not my real father. So I wanted to find out as much as I can. All she was willing to tell me was that story about how they met and that he was dead. Um, so the internet didn't exist until years later, and I looked up Yurik Pazanowski, I couldn't find anything. But I had this need, I had this urge to somehow be connected to this man that I didn't know. So I did what a lot of Scandinavian people did. I took his first name, Yurik, and I had my last name legally changed to Yurikson. Um, and whenever I told anybody about him, I basically told them what I told you this evening. That's all I knew. Three years ago, uh, my mother was uh, being treated for cancer, and my daughter sat next to her. And to keep her company, she was telling stories. She was telling stories about what life was like in Germany after World War II. And one of the things she said is, in order for people to stay a little bit ahead of the law when they were trading on the black market, they would often use various names. I only knew one name. I knew York Pazanowski. My daughter got three more names that my birth father was using. So my mother didn't make it through the chemotherapy. She passed away. I was taking her ashes to Germany, where she has three sisters. It was during that time I came upon this note that my daughter had given me with these other names on it. I went on the internet, and I actually found one of the names. I found a newspaper article from 1957, which stated that this man, this Yurik Klieger, had been arrested. He was a spy for the Russians. He was arrested in Berlin. So then I looked. What else? What happened? Where is the trial? The Germans aren't very forward with that sort of information. I ended up contacting an attorney in Berlin. And she started doing some research. Three days before I was ready to fly to Germany with the ashes, I get an email that stunned me. Mr. Jurgsen, I found the information about your father. He's alive and he wants to meet you. Four days, less, less than a week, it was a little bit more than four days later, I'm at a train station in Berlin, 4,000 miles away from home, standing there waiting to meet my 89-year-old father for the first time. Watching all these people walk by, I'm watching guys in wheelchairs and people being shuffling through with walkers. Is that him? Is that him? This Johnny guy comes walking up to me with his hand extended. He's got a New York Yankees baseball cap on. <laughs> and he looks like the guy in the newspaper article, only a lot older. And so I meet my father. We go back to his home. We exchange stories about our lives. We've got a lot to fill in. 
And at the end of the day, he's accompanying me back to the train station. We agree to stay in touch. Of course, he's got internet and you know his Skypes and all that stuff. What all 80, 9 year old guys do, right? <laughs> so a day after that, I have my mother's ashes. I'm burying her ashes at her parents' gravestone. And I'm thinking, what would she have thought if she knew that I had connected with the man who abandoned her and her unborn child? The man who was thrilled when he heard that I had taken his name and made it my own. And I thought the man who missed 63 birthdays, who missed my wedding, who missed three children that were born. And I somehow felt I'd come full circle back to this soil and felt complete.